Hi, guys. Please subscribe. Don't forget. Hi, sub, guys. Sub, sub, sub. Hi, sub. guys. Sub, 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 subscribe. <laughs> hi, guys. <laughs> I just had to go screw with Morgan a little bit, but <laughs> hi, guys. Subscribe. Please. Oh, my God. You said it with a B. Good job. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Hello, can you everybody. hear me? Hi. Hello. Can you, can you guys hear me? What? You can hear me? What? I don't have headphones, so what? I don't know. I your, don't know if my your, mic's working. Oh, your mic is working just Okay, fine. cool. You're perfect. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Father Knows Something. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, it, wow. is, it isn't Father Knows Anything More Than Something or Anything Less Than We've, Something. We, Justin and I have been thinking about new names, too, actually. Oh, no, we can't change it. I think we might. No. I think we might. No. I'm gonna, I, we're going we're gonna to have an offline conversation, but the name... The name could be changing. I don't think so. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, we have some stories. We do. Tell us about your mix mash, your monster mash. Yeah. <laughs> so we started recording the other night and I was on my, oh, it felt like my deathbed. I was very, very unwell the other night with like the flu. I don't know what's happening. So- I had to get Zofran, anti-nausea. I'm feeling a little better today, but we recorded one story, the three of us. I was so sick. I hopped out on the next one and it was just Justin and my dad. And then we were like, okay, at this point, let's just do the episode over and we'll patch it together. And so we're starting off with, you know, what we have today. And then as we transition, you'll see the stories we attempted the other day. Okay. Yo. All right. So kick it off. What are we doing? Well, we're going to be talking, title pending. Okay. We're going to be talking about family. Family. What else, Jerry? What else is there to talk La about? Familia. Yeah. That's it. What if I was like, today we're talking about cars. Yeah. Well, and you've been, airplanes. We, we've been doing this, you and I. And fixing them. Oh, dad's fix it shot. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, dad went, f Morgan, dad made it back today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it say family on that, on that sign? It does there? not. I don't think so. Let's see. No, it does not. No, but we got it. Yes. We have specialty services as well. Yep. Okay, well, let's get it going. Let's okay rock. Okay. Rock on. Let me start this off by saying, I know the source of my anger with this situation is grief. I, 30 female, am currently losing my own father to ALS. My husband, 35 male, has never known his bio dad with the exception of a few months after his birth. My husband and I have been together for almost seven years and have two kids of our own. It never really bothered me or him that he never knew his father. He's the kind of person that simply accepted that his dad signed away his rights and clearly wanted nothing to do with him. He's never attempted to reach out and continues to have no desire to do so. A few years ago, I was able to track down his family on the internet. I'm somewhat of a cyber sleuth. Oh my God. My husband is interested in seeing pictures of his dad and learn more, but has no interest in taking things further. I was always fine with that until a few weeks ago when my husband brought him up again. I began diving back into cyber sleuthing and found my own feelings about the situation had changed since having kids. Ooh. The more I looked into him, the angrier I got. My husband's dad is not some deadbeat dad. He's a family man. Nine months after my husband was born, he had another son with another woman. It was after the birth of this son that he ended his relationship with my husband. He signed away parental rights about five years after that. I cannot for the life of me reconcile how someone can cut a child completely out of their life only to be a father to other children. To add insult to injury, I believe that when his dad ended the relationship with my husband, he took in his new wife's children from a previous marriage. Those children appear to see him as more of a father figure than their own father, even taking his last name. I struggle with the fact that half his siblings have no knowledge of my husband's existence. 
I hate feeling like his dad won. His dad wanted to completely erase my husband from his life, and that's exactly what he did. I hate that he gets to keep living his life and being a great dad and grandfather to these other children while my husband was abandoned, and in turn, my children will be left without a grandfather. I want nothing more than to tell his dad and stepmom exactly what I think of them, but my husband says it won't make me feel any better. I also struggle with the fact that I have knowledge of his half-siblings and they know nothing of his existence. I almost feel as if I'm harboring this secret and I'm not good at keeping secrets. <laughs> I would never reach out to my husband's family without his permission, and he knows exactly how I feel about it, but he's much more logical than I am. I know it's not my place to destroy a family by revealing my husband's existence, especially when he doesn't desire a relationship with them, I just hate that they know nothing of his existence and at this rate will likely die without ever knowing. Well, Ooh. I have a couple thoughts. First of all, you know, it's not that he walked away from his son. He walks he was walking away from responsibility and any ties. He wanted a clean slate for whatever his reasons was at that time. And I'm not saying that he is right, absolutely wrong, and I can't think of anyone that's not a bigger mourn for yeah, pretty you, shitty fucking you know, dude. For, for walking away from your offspring. As far as the uh, the ability of knowing um, the siblings, knowing that they have a half brother that's out there in the world, nothing better than twenty three and me. Put it out, and put it, put it into the into the into the cloud. Meaning, go get a twenty. You should do a twenty three and me ancestry and, DNA, not twenty three. Or and me. ancestry yeah. and me. Thank you for correcting yeah. me because I only no. Need, I there's there's both, but I, I, I think ancestry is. I'm better. okay. Or maybe do them both because I, who knows what platform true, they're on. True. I I'm only I only know something. I don't know everything. I <laughs> I don't know best. I don't know worst. I know something. So the idea that I that I think that you should do is certainly put the seeds out there. So as they are doing their own DNA stuff, it's going to pop up that they have a sibling and they're going to say, what the hell is this? Yeah. And that way, no one did anything to go uh, into the father's face. But those kids, those those other you know half siblings certainly are going to, as they start looking, they're going to see they had a half brother out there and they'll make the contact and they'll follow up what's going on. Possibility, possibly they may no no one may do anything. There's no guarantee, but that's one way to do it. Yeah, um, he certainly has all the right in the world, I think, to say I have a you know, just letting you know that you do have a biological half brother. I'm out here. If you're interested, here's how you can get a hold of me. You know, as far as our, his father, he doesn't have to have any uh, dialogue with him because he's the one that said I I want no dialogue. Yeah, and let 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 him uh, receive the the responsibility from his actions, purely. But far as the 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 half brothers and sisters, they now have an option to say, you know, we're interested in knowing who you are. We have another half sibling, yes. But again, the father wrote his own course yeah. when, when he walked away, and no one has to change that, and he doesn't have to go put himself in, in his way because far as, you know, it doesn't matter what I'm concerned. He's concerned that the man has no relevance. Yeah, I completely agree. This would drive me bonkers. And I think it's something within me where like the, the sense of injustice drives me nuts. Yep. And it sounds like that's exactly what she's dealing with where she sees this picket white fence, picturesque family now that her husband was denied because his dad is a complete piece of shit. And I think I would do exactly that. Whether you want to be more passive or take the initiative, I would take the initiative and I would write a letter or message the brothers and sisters, siblings, whatever, on Instagram, Facebook and say, hey, just so you know, like I'm out here. I would love to meet um, my our dad signed away rights when I was a baby I would rather just keep our relationship between us at this point, but yeah. I'm out here. And you never know what beautiful family you could have. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're kind of at this crossroads where you're losing your dad to ALS and you're you're looking at how good family can be and how nice it is to have family around you. And then 
on the flip side, you're denied this picturesque thing. Like it's just stabbing wounds again and again. So I would reach out. You never know what could come out of this. And you could have a beautiful aunt, uncles, cousins, and I think it could be amazing. And what do you have to lose? And I think the only thing is maybe your husband's fear of rejection and getting rejected again or further. I think that could be really scary and traumatic if it does happen. So maybe therapy to like really I got, reach out and be prepared. I have another curveball for you. Mm. Let's imagine the following. Maybe there's more to the story. Maybe he really isn't the biological father. Maybe the mother, he found out something regarding the mother and he walked because of something else that went on that we don't know about. We don't Maybe. know. There's there's other surprises that can come to this thing that may, may, may shine some light. So be prepared for that as well. I mean, there, you never know. You, you never know. It could be never anything. Know. But it's certainly uh, worth the phone call to the uh, possible siblings and say, hey, you know, far as I know, this guy you know, walked out on us, gave up all his rights to my mother up for me for whatever his reasons. I really will never know the the real fact, but I do know that you guys are here and I'm in existence. I have nothing against you guys. And I would love to know if you're interested in meeting and seeing, I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to partake. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this as someone who, you know, we have really the past three days extensively talked about you doing your DNA test and like, what if you found out you had a sibling? Like, I think that'd be pretty cool. What are your thoughts on this one? I think that'd be awesome. That's why, I mean, I'm just kind of starting to get into that whole world of like, maybe I'm from descendant of a king. <laughs> maybe I'm descendant from an alien, which would be even cooler. That would be really cool. I don't think that would be, awesome. I don't think your DNA kit's going to tell you that. Considering the ideal outcome, I just want to know how to let this situation go. Lately, I've been so fixated on it and desperately wanting to reach out to express my anger and let them know that even after all these years, their actions still affect lives. However, I know this will open a whole new can of worms that will only bring pain on all sides. Will it though? So for someone like you though, who like, let's say this were you and I, and I'm not interested at all. How do you go about letting something like that go when it's driving you so crazy? I, I think that's what's hard is like, unfortunately, your curiosity killed the cat. Like, it's one of those things where he asked you to look and now you kind of took on this internet sleuthing challenge and you're the only one that's caring. But I think there's more to that. I think, I really think he is checked out because of fear of rejection or, you know, that's a traumatic thing to be raised where, yeah, your dad didn't care. He gave up all his rights. Yeah. That's all you've been told your whole life. That's painful. That's trauma. So I really think together they should go to a couples therapist and unpack this and see how they could proceed forward in a healthy way. But I don't think it's necessarily guaranteed pain on all sides. I think this could turn into something really, really beautiful. And I um, I had a story on Two Hot Takes where we read from someone writing in that they had found out they had 50 siblings. And it was some DNA donor kind of thing. And they are doing big group trips together and they're doing all these things together. And I don't think it necessarily has to blow everyone's families up. I think, you know, maybe they know and they just don't know how to find him. You never know what stories have been told on, on these sides. So I think it's worth a shot reaching out. Is his mother still alive? Um, all I have is my husband's dad is still alive and with the original woman. My husband has two half siblings from this marriage and two step siblings. My husband's cousins went to school with his siblings. Um, my husband's dad briefly stalked his mom and him for a while after signing his rights away and did reach out to his mom via email when my husband was in his 20s. To my knowledge, he only asked how he was doing but never expressed a desire to meet him or get to know him. 
His mother would never prevent a relationship as his half-siblings have a strong relationship with their father. So he, It's interesting. Maybe yeah. he just felt so guilty. He, he felt it was unfair to even ask to meet. You never know, but the attempt I, I, has I'm been just, made in a way. I'm just wondering if, if he went to his mom and said, Mom, is there anything more to the story? I don't know. It seems like she's been very open. Yeah. It seems like the mom doesn't really have anything to hide. The fact that he knows about the email from when he was 20 kind of tells you, like, the mom seems very transparent. This just sounds like he was a shitty guy. And... He walked. He walked. You know, it doesn't sound like this is the mom's fault in any way. And... It's just, you know, we live in a world, in our world, not their world, where you can never turn your back on your own kid, but there are people out there that can. And yeah. That, it may not be what, the way that we are and the way we function, but that doesn't mean it's not the way that people out there do function. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, well, and I think you're you're very mature to understand the source of all of this is, is probably your grief and going through stuff with your own dad. 100%. Um, which, you know, obviously colors everything else you do but i kind of also think this stuff would be a nice distraction just because you're you know you're almost like a little detective trying to figure this all out but then you have someone who's like well i don't really care (laughs) so it is a it is a rather tough position to be in especially because knowing you and i mean even kind of both of us are sense of justice and wanting to just yeah just see i would reach out I have, I, I've known people that have gone through some of this dysfunction in, in, in older generations and they have found their biologic, you know, the, the, put the biological parent back into the um, offspring's life and it turned out well. It, it always turned out, in the stories I've heard, it's always turned out well. Yeah. That doesn't mean that this one might. You just don't know. You never know until you try. But you have to really get him to to really understand. You know, he's got to be on board. You he does, because yeah. if he's going to start getting anything negative, it's like you don't want him to have any bitterness to you for steering up this shit. No, I think first step is go to couples therapy and talk this out and see what his feelings are, if he's scared of rejection, and that's the holdup. I would really take a professional into this Mm -hmm. before proceeding, but please keep us posted because this is going to keep me up at night for for real, for sure. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. One of this week's partners is Dipsy. Self-care comes in all shapes and sizes. And for some, myself included, it looks like a cozy blanket and a sexy fantasy audiobook, which is why I love Dipsy. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They bring these scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Everything from second chance romance, teacher's pet. I mean, you can go on Dipsy, the app or the website and search keywords of what you're into and what you're looking for. I love smut. You know, there's something about curling up with a good book and just reading away. But with Dipsy, these are audio stories. So you got your hands free and you're never going to get bored because new content is released every week and they even have soothing sleep stories so you don't just have to listen to my voice anymore. So let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore some fantasies, relax and unwind, or maybe even heat things up with your partner. If you're ready to try it for yourself, for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash FKS. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash FKS. Dipsystories.com slash FKS. Number two. Number two. Number two. How do I navigate my boyfriend and his family inviting me into their lives while distancing myself from my own toxic family? I'm writing to this podcast as people seem to be knowledgeable and kind in this show. I need a family man's advice on family. I thank you kindly for the love and grace you show people who write in. I'm a 21-year-old woman who had a negative childhood. To make this write in short, my mom is a typical emotionally abusive narcissist. My mom refused money from my grandparents and made it so we barely ate and was addicted to opioids. So I was unwashed and unfed from 8 to 10 years old. My grandma sees me as the little family do-over. Her words, not mine. My biological dad is not in the picture. In short, fuck my family. 
After a lot of self-work and lots of therapy, I began a beautiful relationship with my boyfriend, 24 male. He is the most wonderful man I have met. He has made my life something full of hope and joy. He has a family that has welcomed me into their home and both of their holidays. His parents have said my boyfriend is always smiling and talkative when I am there. We also live together, which is new, but going well. This past Christmas was difficult as it was the first Christmas I spent without my family. I spent the holidays with my boyfriend and his family. It was fun, but I felt separated as it felt obvious I was the odd man out, especially because they're Jewish and don't have any Christmas traditions. His family is not the problem and neither is my boyfriend. The problem is, I do not understand how to accept their invitation. I was crying to my boyfriend, upset that I had no family of my own. He said, quote, you have me. My family is yours too. We're family now. I said, but my family doesn't want me. In his fashion of always trying to make me laugh, he said, fuck your family. You're the only good one. I'm going to stick a bear on your mom. <laughs> That's an interesting expression. He didn't know that I didn't know how to accept his invitation to have him and his family as my own. How do I accept a family I wasn't born into without feeling guilty? How do I navigate the questions his dad has already started to ask? I love his mom, dad, aunt, and twin sister, but how do I have a kind and funny family? How do I heal enough to believe I deserve their offer? Ideal outcome, I want to be able to sit through a family meal without being on edge I want to believe that the invitation they have given numerous times is being given freely. I want to get to the point where my boyfriend and I are ready to get married in about five years. I will believe I am ready. I want to create a found family and be happy with having family around and saying goodbye to the ones that caused me to break. So how do you take them at their word? Um, you accept, you just have to realize the more that you are yourself, the more that they're going to love you for exactly who you are. And, you know, it's, it's interesting in my, I, I'm, I'm of the Jewish faith and I grew up in a Jewish home and I do know that I have brought in a lot of family. Additional to my, my biological family. And when I open that door, that door is open clear and concisely. And you don't have to think twice when they when the, the door is open in your family. Just accept the fact that you're family. And the more that you accept it and welcome and be a part of the criticism that may come from it, the, the help that may come from it, the uh, love that comes from it, all of it is normal. And that bonds you to become deeper and a part of that family. You know, it's a culture. It's not only a religion, it's a culture. And it's that culture that makes that family so special. Yeah, I think when you said you were feeling like the odd man out, mm -hmm. I instantly felt like you're the only one thinking that and you're probably the only one putting yourself in that position from the way you're, you're writing about his family. Um, I think that's all internal, which then you said it has nothing to do with his family or him. It's, it's, it's me and my family. Um, and I think it, I feel like it'll just get more comfortable over time. The more you realize that these people aren't here to backstab you. They're not here to give you a hard time or make you feel unwelcomed. And a lot of that might just come from within your own fear of what you've been through. Right. I was so, that. you know, I think through time and just, I, I feel like there's just a, a way of walking in somewhere kind of like you said, just being yourself, but also letting down your guard and just seeing what happens, having some nice conversations, lean into the Jewish traditions and go to those fun meals and, and all of that. And just, I don't know, just make friends with everyone and become part of that family. It just, I think it's a natural process. Don't, don't let the rejection that you have felt with your family and your blood family contaminate the ability of accepting love from somebody else. And that's probably what's going on here. You, you were, whatever happened in your, in your own biological family, it, your bells are ringing. Yeah. And because you don't know how to accept a normal realm of love. So give it a shot. 
Well, and in a different way than relationships, your radar is probably a little messed up. Like mm -hmm. we, like we say a lot where mm -hmm. you're going in with the fences up, you're looking for anything that could be a sign that, you know, you're so scared of being hurt that you're looking for any possible little thing that could put up that red flag. Mm -hmm. But I think letting the defenses down and just not really thinking, not mm -hmm. overthinking, just walk through the door, yep. whatever event it is, and just fully present. And don't, don't set yourself up for the destruction before, because there is no destruction. It's not inevitable. Yeah. yeah. Well, and in the anything else section too, they do share, after visiting my family this December, I had an intense increase in PTSD attacks, panic attacks, and my other CPTSD symptoms. So I feel like for you, you have to know you're making the right choice by moving forward. And I can imagine that feeling where you feel like you don't deserve a good family or you feel like you're not enough or, you know, whatever else you're feeling, because that would be hard. That is sad to not have a family that is healthy. And so just know like you are enough, you are worthy of this love and a good family and try to not let all of your experiences jade you in a sense. Like you sound like you're really trying and you, you do deserve this. So like trying to believe these people, go forward and believe people until they prove otherwise. Mm -hmm. Go in and give people the benefit of the doubt and until they show that they're not genuine with their actions or what they say, believe them because you do deserve good people in your life. You, you are worthy of that. So, I will offer this as well. It, I, it, counseling might help you as well. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend just for yourself for some counseling. But I want you to, be, to recognize every family has difficult moments. And even though they're welcoming and they love you, that together sometimes families do get their own dynamic. That's not always positive. But you have to accept the fact that when some of this flares up, it's not against you. It's a situation that's going on that they're trying to, as a family, avoid a bigger issue or a problem. So you, you have to work together to make you stronger Yeah, as a family to get through some of the stuff. And it may not involve you at all. It can involve the dog. <laughs> it could involve a neighbor. It can involve another sibling. You just don't know. But, you know, it's you got to just recognize that there in every family, there is some dysfunction. Yeah. And you just can't let it trigger you or, or drive. You have to kind of understand it. But working together consistently as a family makes things always stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep us posted. You got this. It's going to be good. Moving along. Another one of this week's partners is ZocDoc. There's always going to be something in life that we have to compromise on, whether it's dealing with noisy neighbors that live above you, someone stealing your parking spot, or going to the same grocery store again and again because it's close, even though they're always out of everything. Well, when it comes to your health, you shouldn't have to compromise. And with ZocDoc, you don't have to anymore. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. You are going to be done wasting your time with providers that don't listen to you because you're going to go on ZocDoc and you're going to read all the patient reviews from real people like us describing the care they got from these doctors, describing their results. I've personally been using ZocDoc since way before the podcast back in 2015 when I moved to LA and didn't know where to turn to to find a good provider. And it has led me to some of the most amazing, compassionate, knowledgeable doctors I've ever had. Even my gyno is on ZocDoc and when I needed to book an emergency appointment, I was able to get in within just 24 hours. So if you're ready to try for yourself and stop compromising on your health, go to ZocDoc.com slash FKS and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc.com slash FKS. ZocDoc.com slash FKS. Hi, THT and Father Knows crew. I've been an avid listener for about a year now. I, 22 female, have been essentially cast out of my family by my grandparents. I've always been the black sheep of the family, and it only got worse when I began to date my high school sweetheart, male, 21. We are still dating, going on five years, but my whole family disliked my boyfriend when we got together, 
and my grandparents still don't like him, although they wouldn't admit to that. I was informed about a month or two ago that my grandfather was changing his will after my father was arrested for smuggling people across the border. I was the last person to find out. The will goes as follows. My younger brother C gets the entire north section of my grandfather's ranch. This part has a barn, horses, and it's 2,400 acres. My older brother Jay gets the roadside of the south section, which has a well, pens, cows, and it's 1,200 acres. Lastly, I get the back portion of the south section, which isn't accessible since the road was washed out, but it's also 1,200 acres. My grandmother also brought up the rules that they wrote into the will. My father is allowed to do whatever he pleases on the ranch. Doesn't matter what, none of us kids can kick him off. Lastly, I am not allowed to do any archaeology research on the land. I am currently studying to be an archaeologist, and the ranch has some cool sites that could be researched. After hearing this, I was done dealing with them. I would like to sell my portion of the ranch when it becomes mine, but I would be completely excommunicated from my dad's side of the family. I don't want to lose my relationship with my brothers, but no one in the family understands my side of the story. They believe I should just grow up and deal with their antics like everyone else. Thank you for reading my story, and I hope you have a wonderful new year. Ideal outcome, I just want to be at peace and be able to live with the fact that my family won't be in my life. It sucks thinking that if I have kids, they won't know my side of the family except for their grandmother. Anything else? My boyfriend is native and Mexican. My grandparents have gone behind my back to make racist comments about him. They have also made comments about my weight, appearance, and life choices. In high school, I would go to my grandparents' house every Saturday to help out with the house and ranch chores, which no one else would do unless forced to. Even my dad wouldn't go. My grandparents were role models for me growing up since my other grandparents had passed away. I understand that the rules won't stick after my grandfather passes, for me, it's the mere principle of giving the only grandchild who helped out the worst portion and the only constraints. Wills and trusts. Tough shit to deal with. You know, I think that the, unfortunately, you, this may not sound fair to you or right to you, but for right now, because it's a gift, it's a bequest, I think you just have to pretend it doesn't exist. And whatever it whatever it comes from it later, you deal with. If it's um, look, you're twenty. She's twenty one years old now. Mm -hmm. A lot of things happen over the next following years. It, 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 this thing can go on for twenty more years. You have no idea. Your life is going to have many many changes beside this twelve hundred acres of could be great cattle ranch. It could be scrub brush. I have no idea. But the bottom line is for for long as it's not in your name today, it's not your headache, it's not your responsibility, just pretend it doesn't exist It's and go on with your life. If you want to be an archaeologist, I'm certainly, there's going to be plenty of places in this, in this huge round globe where to, <laughs> where to dig. It doesn't have to be on the 1,200 or, or 3,600 acres. And also, you, you never know what happens the day that tidal changes that your siblings may come to you and say, you know something, I really don't have, want anything to do with this thing. You know, why don't we go together and let's 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 take this 3,600 and turn it into a giant uh, development. We have no idea where they're going to go with it at that point in time. And again, it's not tomorrow. It could be 20, it could be 10, 20, 30 years from now before any of this really happens. So go on with life. Don't Don't put a lot of energy into this today. Yeah, I, I feel like for me, I hear this and I'm like, damn, girl, stop complaining. 1,200 acres? 1,200 acres. I, I think it's just like, it's a gift, it's a blessing, and it's not guaranteed. You could be written out of the will tomorrow if you mm -hmm. excommunicate them today. I think this is one of those things that you don't love your family because of what they give you. And I get feeling like the black sheep and being mistreated. And that's kind of a separate 
thing that is a part of the whole thing in the context. But at the same time, like none of that is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. It is not all said and done until he's dead and you're at the will reading. And that is, that's just the bottom line. There could be something that they're saying to you today, but it's not true at all. Um, I think a great movie that you should watch is called The Ultimate Gift. Wonderful movie. It is one of my favorite movies. And it's it's this story about this family who has a massive ranch and oil and all this stuff. And they have this will reading. And the one grandson is, what do I get? And he gets this series of videotapes. And it, it turns out to be a really, really great movie. But something I think you should watch and maybe pull, you know, some meaning from. But I would just say live your life. You know, if they're racist people and you don't want to be around them, then that's obviously what you need to do. But um, none of it is guaranteed. So I feel like you just got to be, you know, do your thing because at the end of the day, he could pass. They could do a will reading and you might not get anything, not even 1,200 acres. The the most important thing is really is be you. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't get, don't get mixed up in all the muck. Yeah. Be who you are. Be the, be the, be the grandchild, be the child, be, be the family person that you, that you can be the best person you can be and not worry about all this other crap. Yeah. Honestly, go have fun on the ranch. Take advantage of the horses and go out there and do it for you. Not for them, not for what you're going to get. I mean, I just, it's tough. And far as the 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 the, the interracial uh, relationship that's going on and the and the problems you have there, he and his own behavior, if they will open their eyes, will come to accept him. If he's great, just have him be as great as he can be. And on their own, they're going to see the happiness that you have, and they're going to look beyond it all. I I, I in pers- an ideal world. Yes. I personally went through this, and I had a very very very. Um, interesting father when it came to to people of other races, and he wasn't always the most welcoming. And my sister, you know, fell in love and married a man of the, uh, that was Hispanic, and he was a fantastic guy. And he gave her nothing but happiness, and who she loved very much. He took on her three children that she had had from a, from a divorce prior to this. And he accepted these kids as his and he adopted and gave them his name. And he was the most amazing man till the day he passed away. But uh, he did win my father's uh, heart. And and it was amazing when that finally happened. But it didn't happen overnight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there was there's a there was a lot of meanness, a lot of dynamic that went on before this. Um, like the stories are horrible. But I will tell you that there was a happy ending. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. When the love came by, and he's never forgotten today, and he's you know passed in 1995, and although my sister has remarried and a wonderful man, and she's got a great marriage now, none of us forget that 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 second husband that she had. Mm-hmm. That was such a he was such a jewel, yeah, and uh, very special, very special man. So they on their own may come to this conclusion if they if they have any sensibility. Yeah. So give them the give them the opportunity to see who he is, what and see what you see in him. I do get the frustration though, because it's like Absolutely. you put your time in. You probably have sentimental value mm-hmm. to these other parts that you're not having any part of, and they're purposely shoving you in the back. Where it's like, no, I loved the barn. I loved the horse. I loved the where the well is and all this. That's where I spent all my time helping you guys. And I have an emotional attachment to all that. And you're saying, nope, you can be out way back there in the woods where no one's been in 30 years. Yeah. Because the whole ranch, (laughs) we're talking seven or eight square miles. That's a lot. You could drive. It's a lot. Seven miles and just take the corner to go around it. There's a lot lot of Texas. (laughs) So it's that coupled with you're just all these shots being taken at you simply because of someone you're with. And it has nothing to do with you or any... You know, what have you gone and done wrong? You went and found someone you love Mm -hmm. and you're being punished. And and now there's shots being fired about your weight, appearance, life choices, you know, the principle of giving you the worst portion because of one simple thing that they don't like. So I get the frustration. 
I do. And I understand what you guys are saying and that all of this is long away and not guaranteed, but you know, you're justified in your, in your feelings. 100%. It's tough to sit there and deal with all that and take all that and still be like, yeah, I'll come to the ranch and help out. You know what I mean? Cause it's just, no. And at this point, like do what makes you happy. Like I probably am coming across like a bit of a hard ass and hearing Justin talk, I can really relate to you. I have two brothers. We have a family farm in Minnesota. I am the only one that cares about it. Justin cares about it and has more sentimental attachment to it than my brothers. If it was up to them, they would lot it off and sell it. Whereas I want to maintain it. I love it. It's my happy place on this earth. So it is frustrating to have to like fight for what you feel is right and justified or so it'd be you know, like fair. right now if the situation they like i guess your mom in this case would be like yeah matt and taylor get the front part with the the house the barn you and get everything, the woods you know? by the power line and that doesn't have a driveway in the back. no i'd be you pissed would, you'd be going world war three I, I would absolutely be pissed but i guess like it's just the wills and all of this shit is so tricky and i look at it as don't shoot yourself in the foot right Right. You're still getting 1200 as of today. Just keep the peace. Families comment about your weight. That's just a toxic family thing. Like it's that generation. My family comments about my weight. They it's just it is what it is. It's you know, you try to set boundaries the best you can. It is not right. Your feelings are valid, but just don't don't overreact or react preemptively and hurt yourself in the future. Like you said, the rules, they're going to be gone. No one's going to know if you're out there digging on 1,200 acres. Right. Drive 20 minutes. <laughs> walk 20 minutes. They're not going to be able to find you in your dig site. Yeah. Have yeah, yeah. fun. Just don't jeopardize what you have in the future by something you do today. Like, just keep the peace. Ignore them. Keep them at arm's length. Live your life. Be happy. But and it's t- still a lot. And typically... When it gets 20 years down the road, 10 years down the road, whatever the time will be, your siblings might be more negotiable and trying to, you know, find, see what your needs are. And, you know, because no one's thinking about an easement, how do I get to my property if if I'm, if I'm landlocked? They have to provide an easement. I mean, you can't, a lot of cities, counties, however, you know, your municipality is run, um, you cannot lot off lands without access to them. So like a lot of them won't do the new property lines. So I, I would just say relax just like we said and see where pretend it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. That, that's my biggest suggestion. Pretend it does not yeah. exist for right now. Live your life. Be happy. Yeah. You got a lot of years in front of you and And let us know about yeah. the digs because if you're going on a great dinosaur dig I may this 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 might want to go. This dad may want to join you. Yeah, we might want to go. I'm down to do a dig. Same. I'm with you. I'm ready to go. It's cool. I got a shovel. Okay. Find a pickaxe. Let's go find some dinosaurs. Yo. Yeah. So this is where we transition to me being a hot mess and then just Justin and Dad. So these are two really good stories. The next one I got very passionate about before I went and puked. So it's, it's really good. You guys. So are you saying you're leaving right now? No. Remember we recorded the other two already, but then I got, we, Ah, this is the hodgepodge we talked about. Another one of this week's partners is HelloFresh. I'm going to call dad in. I'm going to let him tell you what he loves about HelloFresh, but I'm going to tell you what I love about HelloFresh first. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You're going to stay out of the grocery store and let HelloFresh make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. So what do you love about HelloFresh? It's yummy. Mm -hmm. It's always good. It's easy to make. It's consistent. They're always quick and easy. Like dad said, they do always taste good. I'm a picky eater and I love 
everything HelloFresh has sent. And it's because you can customize your meal kit so much. You can pick the types of protein. You can pick whether you want just 15 minute easy recipes or maybe something a little more complex. I love with HelloFresh, you can really make it your meal kit, your meal plan and find something for everyone in your family. And HelloFresh even has breakfast now. In fact, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life. So whether your resolution this year is to save money, eat better or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you with all three of those things. So if you're ready to try it for yourself, go to HelloFresh.com slash FKS free and use code FKS free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash FKS free with code FKS free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right. We ready? We are ready. So uh, you lead the way. Hey, dad, in podcast Sibs. Hi. You can call me Jay. Hello, Jay. I started listening to THT and knew I had to come listen to FKS. <laughs> we can hear See that. what I'm saying? It's how do you sit That's, over here? It's annoying. Okay, there we go. All right. I got that, it. That banana tree is going to be cut down. I'm so glad you listened to THT. <laughs> I'm currently binging FKS to catch up to newer episodes, hoping you can help me. I, female 29, work from home running a small business with my husband, male 31. I'm currently pregnant, due in a few weeks, and I care for our two young kids, homeschooled, in addition to running the business. Wow. Dealing with a few issues, but let's start with this. To avoid over-explaining, let me just say that my husband can be a bit of a hoarder. He brings, all caps, everything home and refuses to throw out the things we might need someday. What was once a cute backyard is now a junkyard mud pit. On one occasion, I hired a dump crew to haul away junk while he was out of town, at a cost of about $800. He wasn't happy when he found out, and within a few months, the mess was back. Then we rented a 20-yard dumpster for some home projects and filled it. Again, the mess came back. I throw what I can in our bins, but he brings junk home faster than I can clear it. My in-laws constantly talk about how neglected and gross the yard is. There's also a dog poop problem because it doesn't get done if I don't poop patrol. But I'm so busy with everything else, it just falls off my radar. How can I get my husband to stop contributing to the problem and help me with taking care of our home and yard? Have you guys ever thought about kinky sex where you just put him in handcuffs and leave him out on the patio? As you clean everything up? <laughs> <laughs> Bad idea. Uh, yeah, I have a, I have, you know, look, I understand hoarders and I understand guys who collect stuff. I am not a hoarder, mm, but I, wait a minute. You're, you're walking a fine line wait yourself. A minute. There's a difference. And I do have stuff that I collect. And then I do on my own go through and I purge. I get rid of all the shit. And then I find out the day that I get rid of it, the next day I'm pissed because I need it. And I think the idea is really to find the place that you can, he can confine his stuff to and he can't go beyond that boundary. Mm -hmm. There's a compromise. But I also have a six month rule. If, I, if I'm not going to use it within the next six months or I haven't used it in the last six months, it's got to go. And so like, I know that I have some stuff. I'm actually doing a lot of eBaying right now. And it's on the table. It's in the house. Our house has literally been upside down. We have Morgan is with me and I'm here and I'm trying to do a project and get it out of the way. And Morgan's getting ready to move. And we, we're, we are beyond cluttered. But I do know that when she moves in four weeks, if, if she doesn't take it, it's going. I'm not a storage facility. And I'm going to be doing the same thing to myself. So it's like, honey, you want it? Take it because it won't be here when you come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's a little bit of a mental health thing going on here. I know hoarding usually is. I love the idea of a confined space. Like you get him a he shed in the backyard. Mm -hmm. And like if it can fit in the shed, it is yours. You can keep it. If it doesn't fit in the shed, it goes. Yeah. But I, I do think you kind of have to work with the underlying problem here and why he has this scarcity mindset. Is there trauma from his childhood? What is going on mentally? And so I think it's time for some therapy because you can't 
you know, keep hauling shit away if you're not fixing the underlying problem and he's just going to bring it right back. Right. And and this is an expensive thing. I mean, I look at our, our friend Uncle Jimmy and it's $2,000 a month implication that he has been paying for, I don't know how many, I don't know, 20 years. Storage for units storage because stuff. he buys so much shit. He doesn't buy it. It's stuff that he just won't get rid of that's been yeah. collected. He moved, he moved a, uh, a 53-footer down from Louisville when he moved. Yeah. And he won't get rid of it. I mean, he, he actually did get forced with his with his mom to go in there and they dumped, you know, you know, one of the one of the units. He had three and now he's down to two. But it's not moving. And and you want and you he has a th- you know two bedroom home, but however you only can live you can only live in the living room yeah. and a bedroom because the other room is a storage unit. Is a hoarding room. Yeah. And it's hard. Like you have three kids. How safe is it for them? Mm-mm. The dog thing would really drive me nuts too. It's like, why did we get this dog if you're not gonna help me take care of it? I would be at my wit's end. You're Three kids, about to be three. Congrats. That's really exciting. But you're homeschooling. You're running a business. You're the only one cleaning. I don't know how you're still above water. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been in a hoarder's home, and I will tell you, it is bad. There's there's a path of roughly about 18 inches wide. I mean, that's my room right now. Like we No, no, no. That's not even close. No, I know. For a genuine hoarder, it can go up to the ceiling. It's awful. You can have cave-ins. I've watched the show. I mean, it is is it's really it's really hard to deal with. And a lot of times if you do get rid of things without the hoarder's permission or letting go, it can actually get worse because their fear, that scarcity mindset just got proven true. Everything can get taken away from me. Like there's a lot of mental health behind it. And maybe he went through something and it's just really starting to rear its head now. You know, he's 30, 30, 31, 31, 31. So like, you know, he's kind of at an interesting point in his life. He's got three kids, maybe mental health is just really suffering. Well, I, I think that help is definitely something that is necessary because I know that my <clears throat> sister's first husband was a hoarder or is a hoarder, even though he is her ex-husband and it was never going to work for her in that lifestyle. And it, that marriage dissolved. Yeah. She's a tidy gal. Yeah. And that just did not work. Well, in our ideal outcome here to take some of this mental and physical workload off my plate and stop him from continuing to bring home more for me to deal with. Additional info, my husband has a habit of bringing home new projects, junk, pets, etc., and he fails to take care of them so it falls on me. But he doesn't seem to see it that way. I've tried talking to him, but if he feels attacked, he gets mad and shuts down. Mm -hmm. I end up apologizing for simply having feelings or an opinion. Stop apologizing. Step one... It's time for him to get therapy. If you bring a pet home, expect it to be gone the next day. There's no more animals. You have proven you can't take care of them. And he needs to start going to therapy. Maybe it's undiagnosed ADHD. Maybe he's got poor executive functioning, but he needs to start tackling this. And honestly, if he's unwilling to, you need to evaluate and ask yourself, is this something I can deal with for the next 40 years? Maybe couples therapy is going to be good to start communicating better because, girl, you are drowning. Well, the the couple therapy will lead him into is is the access door to get into him having some personal therapy. I think he just, he needs to start with both right from the jump. For sure. Right from the jump. And you usually do have two different therapists, um, a couples therapist. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't, they they don't don't want to represent in, yeah, there's no cross contamination there. So he'd have two different therapists, but I, I think it's necessary. Like this is just well, if the money is really being hard, used, if money is being used for the therapist, he won't have money to buy the junk, and it kind of helps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you don't. Sorry, you go ahead. No, well, hopefully, a therapist will allow for them to, you know, see that she is coming from a place of love, saying, "I want to be with you. I want to raise our three kids together. Mm-hmm. I don't want this." to get to a point where I resent you and I no longer want to be in this relationship simply because of this issue. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it to be your mom and say to clean up your stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it so that we can live happily and in a 
you know, clean space. Yeah. Safe yeah. too. It's got to be safe for kids, especially a baby. I mean, True. you can't have animal feces all over. It's filthy. It's, yeah. And it's just, it's not fair for you. You didn't sign up to be a single parent with a husband that doesn't help. And you know what I mean? Like you signed up for a partner and you're not getting that. So I really think setting solid boundaries, shed. Yeah. No more pets. Absolutely not. He wants to bring home a fucking Lincoln Log project. Go ahead. But it goes in your shed. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't stay. Yeah. No fucking animals. Yeah. I, I mean, I wonder the condition of the house. I'm not sure. It because most of this seems to be talking about the backyard. The yard and stuff. But where does that lead? It starts it starts bleeding into the house. I wonder what it was like before they got married. What she when you know what she saw and what she noticed when you know back in the very very you know pre marriage periods back in the courting or when they lived together if they did what she saw if there yeah. was any tales of this yeah and maybe you know it could have been one of those things it's small and it's progressively gotten worse I mean I look at my ADHD since having COVID twice my brain fog my memory my distractibility all of those things are worse. So who knows, you know, what he's gone through health wise, but you got to start addressing it because it's not sustainable and it's not a healthy environment for you, your kids, any, anyone involved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep us posted. Keep us posted. Yeah. Let us know. We want to know. Yeah. Uh, I'm like stressed for you and you're so close to having a third and giving birth and just this is a tough one. Well, you don't want to be dealing with a brand new baby and all this, you know? It's kind of like, it'd be, it'd be nice to take care of this first. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. When you get organized and everything finds a place, everyone's happier, including the guy who owns the stuff. Because when I get my, when I go on a clean binge and I clean it all out and I organize and I hang all my tools and get everything back the way... I feel great. Everything's right where it's supposed to be. Well, it's just a more efficient lifestyle. Yeah. Because then you can find something when you need it. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't end up buying, rebuying things you already have because you can't find them. Because you can't find it. That's what you do a lot. I, right now, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm, in the, I'm in the middle of all that You got to take some of this advice that we're given and <laughs> practice. I'm working at it. I know that my daughter's going to be moving out very soon and my house is going to get gutted and I'm going to put everything back where it belongs and then the next place is the hangar. We'll see. I guess we have an time update for we have an update for all of you yeah, too. Eventually, will we'll see. We'll bring you on. We'll we'll, we'll show you pictures, <laughs> <laughs> updates. All right, let's go. Hi, Jerry, Morgan, Justin, and Holly. I need advice on how to get rid of this heavy feeling in my chest and how to allow my loved ones in about it without feeling disappointed in myself. For a short backstory, even though it's still a bit long. I'm a 23-year-old female who grew up with a single mother. My father, when I was 11, left to Mexico to bring my sister back home, but he never came back and instead cheated on my mom and officially abandoned us when I was 13. My family was already broken before he did this due to an issue with my teenage brother and sister, but he completely shattered me when all of this came out. Since then, I've never spoken to my father or spoken about him much to anyone. All this time he has tried to reach out and have a relationship with me, but I've never responded. My mother never forbid me to have a relationship with him, and she never talked bad about him to me. I just never want a relationship with him. Both my siblings have relationships with him, but he isn't the best father to them either. Basically, the only time he talks to my brother is to ask him to send him things. And for my sister... He lives with her, but doesn't really help her with much either. My mom helps her more than he does. My problem is that recently I started feeling the same feelings I dealt with when growing up and going through all the depression that he's caused me. I had moved on from it a few years ago. I've even forgiven him for what he did. He stopped reaching out around two years ago, and I'm glad he did. I'm in a relationship with my boyfriend, and we have been talking about marriage and having kids which is now stirring up some feelings about my father. It has always been hard growing up without a father, especially since I didn't really have any father figures either. I've moved past everything from his side of the family comments to my own self-hatred because of him. 
Now that every feeling is coming back, I don't know what to do. Everyone close to me has noticed a change in me, but I can't get myself to admit that he's affecting me again, especially without being so disappointed in myself. What can I do or how can I open up about it? Any advice is appreciated. One word. Counseling. You know, your dad has made such an effect, in, an effective impact on you with the behaviors that was going on before you were 11. Yep. As 11 and beyond. Yeah. And then you as a teenager went through your processing of basically him being dead to you and the rejection that, you know, you were taking on with the fact that, you know, he left and who knows, you know, kids say, gee, you know, I was a bad child because he left me and they take that blame on themselves where they had nothing to do with it. True. So I do believe, uh, and I, and I have had things in my life. I was in a car accident when I was, um, three, some, some of you might remember this from early shows and I interpreted that accident when I was in the hospital by hearing people talk. And when I was 21, I went for psychological assistance. I went through hypnosis. And it was a, it was a very impactive thing yeah. that I went through. Um, all healthy and not bad. And, you know, some of the stigmas that people may think that are, out, you know, we, we, we consistently talk about getting, you know, you know, emotional assistance yeah. and it's not a bad thing. And, you know, it's very well accepted today. Everyone, you know, probably should go just for the hell of it. Yeah, because, that is true. Because we don't know really how you interpret certain things in your life and, you know, how they, you know, what happens. I mean, today it's interesting. We were just watching the news and we saw news of a judge handing down a decision where someone wanted to get off or not go back to jail. And she you know, said, no, with your history, you're going back. And he flew across the, the bench and attacked her, showing exactly he, is, he belongs in jail. True. He didn't reaffirm her that she made a mistake. Right. She re he reaffirmed that that's where he belongs. So, you know, she's going to carry this, the fact of this person flying over the, and, and hurting her. This is going to have a, a reaction onto her for the rest of her career. My brother-in-law was a felony judge, and he has impacts from stories from years ago from being a DA and a judge. Yeah. So, you know, things go on in our lives. So I do suggest that you find someone to give you some counseling. And you you may find that there are good ones out there that can relate to you, and you may find out there's some that are not. So that. That's the next challenge is find the right psychologist or psychiatrist that to, or counselor to, to, to assist you. Yeah. But I think it won't hurt you. And if you were my child and we were having this conversation, I would say, baby, I think you just give it a shot and go have, go, have, go, go do a, the first meeting and see what happens after that of what you feel. Yeah. Well, and the fact that all these feelings are resurfacing mm -hmm. tells me that you maybe thought you moved on from it, but... Bells you haven't. I think it just got pushed very deep, deep down and pushed off. And, you know, um, hopefully you felt good for a while, but it, you know, your ideal outcome, being able to move on from mm -hmm. it again completely this time. Yeah, these bells are ringing and you don't want whatever, whatever interpretation is in your subconscious, you don't want it to affect your relationship with this, with, with, with the man of your life. And and to, and to set and to do what sometimes subconsciously we set up bad situations in ourselves for repeats. Yeah. You know, you, in order to go on with your life, let's make sure that you're healed from all of this. Yes. And the tricky part is anything else, finally talking to him and maybe starting a relationship with him is not an option. I still don't want that. I can't really do therapy, even though I know I do need it. I just don't have the money for it or any insurance for it. And, you know, that we find that with a lot of different people that write in. If anyone has ideas on, on how to help her uh, get some state assistance in yeah. doing this, because there are some things that are out there if you find the right thing or, I mean, you definitely have something going on. And I'm not telling you to go have a relationship with him. Right. 
because the bottom line is, is that, you know, he did this to himself. You know, Morgan comes from most of my, both, all three of my kids come from a different father. And even though no one bashed their father, I've always said those fathers will create the relationship with those kids. And he'll, he'll either, they'll, each father will either succeed or they will fail. And you find that one of them's great and the other ones are not so great. Yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. I think, um, I mean, you know, you do need it. And I think it should be an absolute priority to find some way. Hopefully, hopefully someone out there can help us answer that mm -hmm. a little better. But you're talking about going to therapy to help you with mental health things right now that will affect you the rest of your life. Your whole life. And so it's invaluable to get that therapy. It's, it's more important than a car. Yeah, it's... It's, it, it's, it's part of your breathing. Yeah. You need to make sure if, if you had a problem breathing, you would do whatever you had to do yeah. to solve that problem. Yeah. And this is, this is how serious this is. This is part of your mental health. Yeah, which not to mention only family, but also mm -hmm. with your relationship and having kids and, you know, doing this whole thing. You want to be in the right, have the right foundation for right. all of that. And let us know how you're doing. And yeah. certainly read the comments because the comments themselves will, will help you with this one. 100%. Okay. Okay. Thanks for chiming in and watching this week's Father Knows. And uh, on that note, we're going to have a Patreon after this. Yes. So come uh, to our backyard and we'll see if uh, we can eat one of those bananas. See what we're grilling tonight. Yeah. What but, is up with this cook sesh? I have no idea, but I can't wait till we actually open the door and fire up a barbecue out there. And <laughs> oh my it. gosh, bye. And make our s'mores. We have a s'more <laughs> kit. A I what? Saw, I saw the s'more kit. Yeah. <laughs> Good Bye, night, guys. Everyone. Bye.